This is factory polynomials by grouping. Now, the idea is that we do not have a trinomial to try to factor in some of the patterns I've already discussed in previous videos, but the clue is that in most cases, if you have to factor by grouping, of course the directions might tell you to do it that way, but you will probably have four terms, not three. Now, here's the idea. The key is in arranging the four terms in a way that makes it work. There are certain ways of putting these in order where the answer will not be obvious, okay? But most of the times your teacher or the worksheet you're working on will have them in the proper order so far, um, unless they want to try to trick you or just make it more complex. Now, so what we do is we put these in order of degree. Um, now, I know that the negative 4x and the positive 3x have the same degree, first degree terms. That's x to the first and x to the first. But here we have x squared and an x to the first, x to the first, and this is a constant. Okay? Basically, the trick is putting the terms in order according to their degree and then see if you can find a common factor. Now, look at x squared minus 4x. Basically, just factor those two terms. Notice that the only common factor is an x. Okay? Now if I divide an x out of both of those, that leaves me with x minus 4. Again, to double check, you would multiply out again x times x and x times negative 4. Alright, now I'm going to keep this sign here and I'm going to look and see what common factor I have with 3x minus 12. Well, in this case it would be a 3. Okay? And on the inside that would be x minus 12. Now here's the key to factoring by grouping. When I split this up, I need to have the exact same binomial here. Okay, Most times it will be a binomial. So I'm just going to color it in blue and you'll see that I have x times that binomial and 3 times that same binomial. That binomial has to be exactly the same, the signs and the terms inside and everything. Okay, now notice how it's here twice, all right? The key now is to write it once, all right? If I notice that an x minus 4 is common with both of these parts, I write it down once. So I put down x minus 4, and then I see what's left. On the outside here, I have an x. On the outside here, I have a plus 3, and that is my other binomial. This x came from here and this 3 came from here. All right, now it's a lot of um, arrows, but let me just show you another quick example before we get to some problems. Let's say that we've already taken out the common factors, and the question we need to ask is, is this binomial the same as that binomial exactly? Okay, if they are, then you write it down only once. Okay, then it's 3x, and positive 4 and that becomes the other binomial. Usually your answers in factoring by grouping is a binomial times a binomial. Alright, again, this 3x comes from that 3x and this 4 comes from that 4. Alright, so look for a common binomial in that expression. Number 29, just look at the first two terms. Notice how the exponents go down by degree, k to the third, k squared, k to the first, and a constant. All right, so just look at two at a time, 15k to the third and 9k squared. Take out the largest factor. Well, that would be 3k squared, okay? What's left? 5k and 3. 5k plus 3. All right. Now, if we do this right, we're going to look at the second pair of factors uh, of terms and see if we can find a common factor. I know that notice that a 2 is a common factor. Actually, let's try a 4. And, I, and both of these terms are negative, so we're going to factor out a negative 4. And if we do this right, we should get 5k plus 3. Notice this 5k plus 3 binomial is the same as this one, and I only write it down once. 5k plus 3. Alright, what's left? I have a 3k squared minus 4. Now, 
Now, I do need to double check that I can't factor anything else out, and there are no common factors inside that binomial and that binomial. So if I was to multiply that binomial times that binomial, I would have the original problem. Okay, so here we are, factored by groups. All right, number 30. The exponents are in order, so let's take them two terms at a time. I have 42a to the third plus 49a squared. Well, I know there's an a squared common term there. And then look at the numbers, 42 and 49. It looks like 7 can be divided out. So 7a squared is factored out. That leaves me with 6a plus 7. All right, we're going to hope for the best and look at the next group of terms. If I factor out an 8 out of each of those, that would give me 6a plus 7. All right, success, because the 6a plus 7 binomial is the same. All right, so I'm going to write that down once. That's a common factor with that whole expression there. And then I have what's left, 7a squared plus 8. All right, on a piece of paper, I want you to try number 31 and 32, and I'll very quickly, after a short pause, show you the answer, and I'll leave 33, 34 for you to do on your own. On number 31, notice how 5p minus 2 is the common binomial, and so we write it down once. What's left? 8p squared plus 1. All right, over here, the x minus 2 binomial is the common factor there. And then I write it down once as part of my final answer, x minus 2. And I have 4x squared minus 3. OK, just a quick note here. Notice that 5p minus 2 doesn't change. But in order to make it work with my factoring pattern in groups, I factor out a 1. That's why it's 8p squared plus 1. All right, don't forget about that. All right, try 33 and 34. And again, thanks for watching this video.